Hey everybody, welcome to Live Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse, and today we're going to work on some more HTML and CSS. We're just going to continue on with what we were doing yesterday. Did make a few adjustments yesterday, mainly in the JavaScript. So I'll briefly go over uh, what we've done. Uh, Harsh had helped out a lot with that. And then we'll get right into it. Uh, probably going to be about an hour and a half for this stream. Uh, we'll see. I actually haven't been feeling that well. So my stomach hurts really bad. I have no idea why. So if it gets like worse then maybe I'll end the stream but for now I think I'm okay to stream um, let me see we may have I keep trying to get one of my co-workers to come in on the stream she's just starting out with coding and I thought it would be cool since we're doing beginner stuff if she would come in and ask questions too but uh, she said she's too tired so <laughs> we'll see we'll see if she comes um, also, my camera keeps stopping, um, so I don't know, I can get it turned back on, uh, I'm just going to have to keep an eye on it and make sure that it's, it's still going. So just a, just heads up, if my screen just freezes like it did just now, <laughs> then I need to uh, restart it. Yeah, so all of a sudden my fan will start going really fast and my camera shuts off. I don't know why that's happening. All right, so let's switch over to the code. And we'll see what's going on here. Let me check the live chat quickly just to say hello. Uh, looks like, oh, Harshit wrote a blog today uh, about GraphQL. So it's really cool. Uh, Harshit's blog is hptechblogs.com uh, so check that out if you want to read some of his blogs hey everybody <laughs> um, alright oh cool um, <laughs> Ethan said great holiday sweater yeah I actually have two holidays let me show you all this other holiday sweater I got I should have done it when I had the camera on Full. So here, I'll switch it back really quickly. So we had a white elephant uh, Christmas gift exchange. So uh, at at my my office today, and I got this women's Christmas sweater vest. So I was wearing it around earlier. I have a picture of me with it on on my Instagram now, because uh, it actually fits me. Evidently, women's size medium is the perfect size for me. So, <laughs> I think I'll probably give it to my wife, though. <laughs> Let's see. Also, I do want to mention, since Ethan's here in the live chat, so Ethan did a, um, a stream two days ago. I think it was two days ago. Um, he went through a bunch of the new ES6 challenges for free code camp and um, went through them all, solved them, uh, wrote the tests. Uh, so it was really cool. I, I watched some of the stream live and I watched some of the recording of it as well. And um, you did a great job, Ethan. So uh, anyway, if you haven't checked that out already, I think it's really cool. And it's a good overview if you would like to contribute to any of the free code camp challenges then you know check out that video and just to get a perspective of how someone else contributes uh, and then maybe it'll give you a good idea if that's something you'd like to do uh, Andrew says uh, is also learning GraphQL alongside Gatsby intimidating at first but it seems really powerful uh, yeah, definitely. Th that was what I thought about it at first. Uh, if you're not using GraphQL already, check it out. We've done some streams about it. You can go back and watch those. Uh, we'll be doing more streams with GraphQL later on. Uh, but now that I've used it, I don't ever want to use anything else. So if you're using maybe REST APIs right now, check out GraphQL. It's, it's, it's worth learning. 
All right. Um, Ethan said, thank you so much. You're welcome. No problem. All right. Um, hey, Vernique's here. I do. Okay, so uh, Vernique says, hey, Jesse, hope you remember me from Nashville in November. I was the one you were helping with the bookstore project. I'm still learning. Yeah, for sure. I remember. Uh, I was just wondering recently how you were doing with the project. Um, so I don't know what. Yeah, I don't remember. It's just like out of nowhere. I was thinking, hey, did she ever finish that project? But anyway, thanks so much uh, for um, for coming on and, and checking out the stream. All right, let's. Yeah, let me get started. Okay, you're still working on it, Vernique. Cool. You'll have to, um, if you can. I'd love to check out the project once it's finished. Uh, so I know there was some of the API you're trying to hit was uh, you could only access it from a certain place So I don't know if you if I could see a working version of it, but if it's possible I, that would be kind of cool if you're up for it Okay, so let me get started and Let me start my Pomodoro cycle if you haven't watched before I kind of break the stream up into several Pomodoro sessions so we do 25 minutes of code, we take a five minute break and I answer some of your questions in the live chat and we do another 25 minute session. And then after that, the whole second half of the stream is all just answering questions in the live chat. Uh, so be patient if you ask a question and I will get to it at some point during the stream. All right, so let me switch back so you all can see the code. So very quickly, let me show you what I've done and what Harshit has done in terms of uh, correcting the problem we were having yesterday. So if you remember yesterday, we had um, the D. Let me bring. Let me bring over the website so y'all can see it. It's on my other screen now. Mm, I have too many screens open. Sorry, still trying to find it. There we go. Okay. So, yesterday we were having problems where these were all um, like drop downs, right? They were hidden by default. You had to click on details to get them to show. So, obviously, we solved that problem, right? It, you can see everything by default. So, here's how we did that. So Harshit submitted a pull request yesterday and uh, went through, let me make this a bit bigger. I'm gonna hide this on the side, make it bigger. And we don't need this right now, so I'm gonna shrink it. And let me know if that's not big enough uh, for the font size, I can make it even bigger. Uh, let me get... Okay, let's, um, someone asked about ngrok, so let me give, give you that link. I think I still have the server on from yesterday. I never, <laughs> yeah, I do. So I never turned it off. So here's the link. So you can check out the site live as we're working on it. And um, if you want, let me give you the, the ending. So this is where we're at. So if you want to paste that onto the end of the link, uh, that's what page we're on. Um, the program I'm using as my editor is Visual Studio Code. It's from Microsoft and it is free. Uh, let's see. Oh, Harshit says that I can remove this Global X content. That was for testing. All right, cool. Thanks. Yeah, I wasn't sure why that was in there. Uh, but it worked with it in there, and um, I've been Harshit's been working with me on these projects for long enough that uh, I, I trust that that was okay to have in there. So anyway, I left it in. But we'll take it out now. So basically, it's just using a regular expression here, um, and then it's replacing it with, in this case, a div that's class of details, and then a closing div. 
So I had to change a little bit. Uh, so the problem I was having originally was that there were some other tags that had the word details in the tag and it was catching those tags as well uh, and it was changing it so it, it had some really weird things happening with the HTML so what I did was included the entire tag so in, in the opening and closing brackets and then here I included the slash as well so I have you see I have a two two different slashes here the first one tells uh, first one basically means whatever I type next, uh, you know, treat it as part of what I'm looking for. You know, because normally the slash would have a special meaning in a regular expression, but in this case, I I actually want to search for a tag that has that slash in there. Okay, so um, the G means global, so we're going to try to find every instance of that. Uh, so anyway, that's that's really the only changes I made uh, from what uh, what Harshit had done, um, and that that works. Uh, also in our CSS, which we'll be working mainly in our CSS now, I added this right column blogs and the br tag to our list of things not to display because there were some really weird positioning things going on because of these two. This was an element that had a lot of stuff in it but it was all empty but those things were still taking up a lot of space and then there's for some reason WordPress is inserting a ton of breaks so until I figure out how to fix that on the WordPress side of things I just decided to display none for for the you know BR tags alright so that's where we are now once, once I did that with the BR tags, though, some things got out of place. So these were all stacked on top of each other. Uh, now you can see they're side by side. They're definitely better stacked on top of each other. But instead of adding the, the breaks, we'll just add some, some CSS to get them positioned properly. All right, so let's go. Let's go to our Dev Tools. So I'm going to inspect this, and let's move this over to the side. And uh, the first thing we're going to try to do, because it's, I think it'll look um, pretty simple uh, and clean, is we're just going to try to get this all to display properly right in a row. And this will be the way we want it to look on a, a small screen so let's say like on a on a phone screen right so the way we'll probably do this is we'll start with a small screen view get it looking good and then expand and then see what adjustments we should make for a larger screen I guess you could call this like mobile first um, so that's the way we're going to do it. So today I'd like to you know, get these all stacked properly and then get the formatting on this list. Uh, we need to fix it a bit. That's the font's too small. I don't want it to be bolded. So uh, if we can accomplish that today, I'll be happy. So first things first, let's get these stacked. I want the title at the top above the image and then I want these items, uh, phone number, email, uh, this link to a CV uh, all stacked so first let's check out this title and probably the easiest way to make them stack will be to do a display block all right so if we do a display block it's stacked right there so what, we'll, what I'm gonna do then is just take all of these elements and add display block to them. So I'm going to move this off to the side now so I can see it and I'm going to go back in here and let's add, add a few things in. So this is all just plain CSS. We're going to add the name, name uh, tag. There's a lot of custom HTML tags, which is it's valid to do this, but it may look a little strange. And we also need the phone and email. Email 
and let's go CV link now there's another tag here that we're not using right now but some faculty member profiles might have it so I'm gonna add it in here and that's a video embed All right, so just in case we run into that later on it should be covered by these rules and the last thing we have is center column details and that would be that um, this education right here that's the center column details so we'll add that as well all right so now we're gonna do a display oops display block and let's save that and we'll give it a refresh all right cool so uh, now we have this all stacked up hmm. well wow, that's interesting I, I now remember that we did not do anything uh, to make this responsive at the top so we make sure when we won't forget that uh, so that that's gonna mess with our responsiveness a bit here or being able to test it out properly so I'm gonna just open this a little bit so we can see what's going on here and try to get that fixed <laughs> probably the next thing I do will, will be fixing that all right so that's not bad Let's look at our spacing. We're going to need to add a little bit more spacing here um, above education. Uh, I think we should add some spacing between the image and that phone number. Maybe a little bit. See, on this image, it doesn't look bad because there's so much white at the top. But I think on a different image where there's not so much white, this is going to look cramped. So let's add maybe you know eight pixels of space here we'll try maybe 16 uh, and that should be okay for this I do want to check the font size on this it looks a little small for me a little smaller than I like uh, let's bring this back over so we can check the font size I guess we have no font size set so is it automatically setting that's odd I guess it's just going to whatever the default is uh, so what I'd like to have let's just see font size 16 pixels all right, so we were at 16. I thought it was 16. 16 is not bad, but I'd like to go closer to 18. We'll try 18 on everything. Um, if it looks, we'll, we'll see how it looks. I like to go with a larger font, uh, you know, for readability. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's go ahead and input in here for for the p tags. We want font size to be eighteen pixels, and that's not going to cover everything because uh, we have some things in in other tags, but. We'll add those as we as we find them. Uh, now let's let's try to add here under our title. Uh, let's let's do it in DevTools so that you know we can see the result. Uh, so let's go with a margin bottom of let's try eight pixels first and see how that looks. Actually, that's not bad. It's hard to see right because of 
you know the color of that image but I think eight eight works you know what I think is I'd also maybe like to change the the font size. I don't know where I. Here we go. So I already had name here before. Font size twenty four. Let's try twenty six for that font size, and then we'll go margin, bottom, and eight pixels. So we do uh, try to follow material design, and usually in material design, things go in, in like eight. So you see eight pixels a lot, 16 pixels uh, as kind of the spacing between things. So th that's what I usually start out with, eight, 16, um, 24. I use those values a lot. All right, so that's fine for that one. Let's try to do a similar spacing here. And this is under a phone. Uh, so let's do, whoops, accidentally put that on the tag with, with all this in here. Uh, which it might not be bad to add some spacing in, but I don't think that much spacing is, yeah, I don't know that I would want that much spacing. Uh, so here on this tag, let's go with, margin top of yeah let's go eight that's not bad I thought it would be too small but let, let's just stick with eight for now and yeah we'll stick with eight for now I do want to make sure we have a proper line height for everything too so we'll we'll take care of that in a second uh, so here let's just take this and I'm gonna get rid of this font size and I'm gonna change this to phone all right uh, you can see right now I have very little organization to the CSS uh, we may end up converting this and using it like in the component at some point, uh, or if we do leave it as CSS, you know, we'll kind of try to organize it better. Uh, but for right now, uh, it's we don't have a lot, so I'm not super worried about organization. That may not be the best way to do it, but uh, usually I don't worry about that when I only have a few lines. All right, so let's do this center column details, and we're going to add margin top. Uh, I'm going to try 16 pixels. Yeah, 16 is better. OK, because we really want to separate that out you know, from, from this. So 16 looks good. Uh, and that heading could maybe be a bit bigger as well. Uh, so let's try to do the heading. Um, yeah, let me add a class for heading. Let's try to make all those those headings there. Uh, twenty. Let's let's try twenty two pixels. All right. I want to see this in comparison to the title here. Um, Actually, I want the title to be larger. I, I'm not sure though that what we've done to the title has actually taken effect yet. So, because uh, we did change that and make it a bit bigger. Okay, but I I like that. Uh, so let's let's check with that. This was center column details. The center column details is going to get a margin top of 16 pixels and then the header heading yeah it's called a heading right heading is going to get a font size of 22 pixels Let's double check to make sure we increased our font size for name, and we did. All right, so I'm going to save that, and uh, I'm going to refresh it now so we can see all of our changes. Okay, 
Uh, yeah, this is still, it's still not looking as big as I would like it to be, even though we made the font size 26. So let's go, let's go with 30. And let me make sure, okay, I'm not zoomed in. All right, I'm gonna go with 30 for this one. Cause I want it to be obviously, you know, bigger than these subheadings. And I think at 30, you, you can get that immediately. Anything lower than that, and it's not, uh, you, you have to kind of look at it more closely to tell. So let's go with 30. And again, if you're just joining me uh, and you haven't watched the streams before, uh, please um, be patient. If you've written a question in the live chat, I will get to the questions in the live chat uh, in just a few minutes. I split things up and I do some coding and then I go back to the live chat. So I'm in the coding session right now. Uh, and then we'll do some question and answer stuff here uh, in just a little bit. All right, so let's do that. I did notice something with the phone number where I put the wrong thing. So I it should have been margin top. And I had just copied from name. Uh, and so I got the wrong, wrong thing. There we go. Okay, much better. Uh, let's see. I want to make sure our font size change took effect. Yes, font size 18. But it seems like on this, we're, we're not at font size 18. So let's add in to our font size 18. Uh, let's just add in ULs as well and see if that'll cover uh, what we want. And actually, yeah, let's... I mean, Let's try to do it here. So it looked like there wasn't a font size set at all. So we may be able to just cover everything if we put this on main here. And then the ones that we specified here should override that. Uh, let's see if it works that way. OK. All right, not bad. Now this looks right. I'm gonna double check though. Uh, okay, it's inherited that. Yeah, let's see if let's see if I took that off. Okay, so that on main didn't really do much. Okay. So I may as well take that off of main since it didn't do anything anyway. And it's working on almost everything. We just have these. So let's see what kind of tag that is. Oh, eight, six. That's odd. Okay, so uh, we're gonna have to override the default size for an H6. So I usually, I, I don't like to override the H tags as much um, if I don't have to, but in this case, obviously we can't have it that small. Uh, so let's override those H tags and we can try to be specific and say H tags that are just within an LI. Uh, it, it probably doesn't matter. I'm thinking the only place where we're gonna see H6s on the faculty pages are in here. Um, but I, I honestly think it'll help me reading this later on to know why exactly I made that change to the 8.6 if I specify here that it was in an LI. H6, and let's do font size. Let's make them, the, should we make them the same as the headings? No, we need them to be smaller than the headings. Uh, Let's make these. Let's let's try twenty. Oh, okay, twenty pixels looks pretty big. You know what? I don't mind. 20 pixels there, so 
I don't really even mind 18, but I do want to take off the, the bold. So let's, you know, let's play with the font weight a bit. So uh, font weight is kind of like the boldness, right, of the um, uh, of the font. So we're going to take it through some here. 400 is the baseline of, of what we have everywhere right now. Uh, five, six. All right. We could go five. Did we have five or six? Let's try five right now, and let me take this off. Yeah, it looks like it's six, so I don't want 600. Five looks much better, and we still have a little distinction there. Um, let's, let's check this out. I wanna see, let me see what, what it'll look like if we change all of these font weights to 300. Hmm. I actually really like the look of a thinner font. I'm gonna stake, I'm gonna keep that thinner font now, but Definitely want to test this. It may not be as readable on um, on certain screens. So I'm going to kind of tentatively uh, keep the font, uh, font weight at 300. All right, so let's add this here as font weight 300 and then our eight sixes as font size what do we have that at 20 and then font weight at what was we just said 400 yeah okay all right, so I'm gonna save that, give it a refresh, just see if anything looks really weird. Nope, but it looks fine. At least on my monitor, that font still seems really small. I mean, is that really 18? It just seems, it is really 18, wow. There we go. All right, so line height 1.5, at, at least for me on my screen, makes it seem a lot more readable. So let's add that in as well. I usually use a line height of 1.5, so that's not bad. We'll stick with that. Actually, else? yeah, we'll keep it line height 1.5. Okay. Now, my Pomodoro timer did go off a minute or two ago, so I'm going to go a short five-minute break. I'm going to go back to the live chat right now, and um, I will answer as many questions as I can. Also, just notice that my camera shut off, so I'm going to get that camera started again. There we go. I guess it doesn't really matter if you all can see me, so <laughs> not a big deal. I'm going to leave it on this screen so I can see my timer. And I'm going to scroll up, see what questions I missed. Uh, Nino says, do you think PHP is a good language? Because there's a big uh, gap in that field and a big opportunity to make something. Um, it, my feeling on uh, programming languages is you can build good things and terrible things with any programming language. So uh, I personally don't have as much fun building things in PHP. I enjoy JavaScript more. Um, 
so there are certain languages that I personally like more than others just because of my experience with it, how good I am with those languages, you know, the amount of syntax that it takes, right? Like Python just seems more fun to me than PHP uh, just because of the syntax, right? But it, it does depend on your exposure. So I would say uh, if you enjoy using PHP and you can get a job with it, then use PHP. Uh, I don't really know any of the statistics as to whether or not jobs in PHP are growing or shrinking or anything like that. But you might want to look into that as well uh, if you're trying to plan out you know, what you want to do for your career. And the other good thing to keep in mind is it's not that hard to switch from one program programming language to another. So even if you decide to specialize in one now, you could always change it up later on, you know, if, you know, if things shift, you know, you gotta, you know, you have to learn what you need, you know, for your job, be able to support yourself and your family and pay the bills. Oh, okay, Harshit. Arshid says, uh, and this was a little while ago, it said it's, it's 1.30 p.m. there, so he's really sleepy. Yeah, uh, or I'm sorry, a.m., a.m. Um, yeah, Harshit, if, um, if, you, if you need to go to sleep, by all means, go to sleep. I, only, I just had to start later today because uh, we had a Christmas party here at the office. So I'll, I'll try to make sure I don't stream this late, uh, usually. Let's see. Uh, Harshit recommends moving the CSS to a style JSX tag so that it may be scoped and non-render blocking and splitted. It will also give live reloading. Harshit, I think I will move it into a tag like that. For these videos, since I, I wanted to take this opportunity to do some videos that would be uh, as easy as possible for beginners to understand, I decided to use the CSS file, but you're you're completely right. We will get some benefits from moving it into our component with the style JSX tag. So, if if you don't know much about React and you didn't understand what we were, I was just talking about, don't worry about it. Um, it's it's just a a certain way you could do something when working with React. So you don't need to worry about it unless you really want to learn React. Uh, let's see. Sergio says, hello, I'm new here. Is he doing some kind of free code camp challenges? Uh, I'm not doing the challenges right now. In this stream, I actually work on the projects that I need to for my job as a front end developer. Uh, I work for a small university. And uh, so we're redoing the main website for our university. And uh, so that's what I'm working on right now. I'm working on a, a template that's going to display all the faculty members here at the university. Uh, Moises asks, what are those colors on the number column? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking, like what number column you're asking about. So if you can, if you're still watching, uh, could you give me some hints as to what number column you're talking about? I'm sure if I would have saw your comment while I was doing it, it would have been obvious, but now after the fact I can't remember what I was doing that would have a number column uh, so anyway I'd love to answer your question just need a little bit more info uh, if possible please uh, okay so I'm gonna go back to the coding for a bit and uh, then I'll come back in the live chat so if I didn't get to your question yet stick around for a little while if you can and I will get to your question if for some reason you can't stick around, I'll still answer your question later on, and you can always watch the recording of this video uh, and uh, hear the answer to your question, uh, you know, whatever time you feel like watching the recording. Okay, so let's start this up. Uh, we'll do one more Pomodoro session. Let's see, three, four, two. Okay, I think we're good. 
I do need to make sure that I'm home in time uh, to watch the baby. So my wife is, and most of my kids are going to go Christmas caroling at a nursing home. But uh, my youngest, Cordelia, who's, who's one and a half almost, um, she was sick last night. So obviously we don't want her going to a nursing home. She might get, you know, the people that are sick. So I'm going to stay home with her. But that means I have to make sure I'm home from work and enough time for, for them to get over to the nursing home. All right. So let's see what we want to do now. All right. So we have everything in a column. The spacing is not bad. It's not perfect. Uh, let's see what we can do about it. All right, it looks like we need less spacing between education and this first bullet point. We need to make education as a header and these, we need to make them the same. It looks like something's off in here. So maybe it's, I think it's the weight. Uh, so we'll have to match the font weight. So I think this is 400 and this looks like 300. So let's match those font weights and then let's change the, yeah, it's, it's going to be slight, but I definitely think there's less spacing here. So we're going to change that up a bit and then we'll move on and we'll work on the spacing down here. Okay, so first things first, let's see what tag this is. So this is a heading, heading tag. And I think if we put font weight 400, yep, that should do it for the font weight. And then let's do a margin bottom. Uh, let's, let's see where we're at. Let's do a zero first. All right, so we don't really have, yeah, we have nothing there right now. What's giving us that space? There we go. It's, it's inside of a paragraph tag. That's our problem. Let's see what we can do. Where is this paragraph tag? And you know what, we probably don't even originally have a paragraph tag. It's just WordPress is adding this in here for us. Hmm. All right, we can we can select just this paragraph tag. And let's do that here just to test it out. And let's go with the margin. Oops. Bottom of 0. That didn't even move it up, did it? No, it's making no difference. Interesting. That's really odd. Okay, well, I guess we won't worry about that. Let's take this off there now. And, well, in this case, I think we're just going to have to do a negative margin if we can here. Uh, so let's find, where are we at? So we got to go inside this P tag again. And let's find this. Let's go with the center column details. And let's add our margin onto this. Uh, so let's go margin. Whoops. Margin bottom of, let's go with a negative eight pixels. And now I'm going to have to, I'm going to eyeball this a bit for now. If we can get it close, I'll be all right with that. That looks pretty close. I'm going to leave it at that for now because that's, yeah, that, that's really, really close. Okay. Uh, so we're going to add a margin bottom of eight to our center column details. Oops. And then we're also going to add that, uh, where was it at? 
heading. We're going to add that font size, or I'm sorry, font weight of 400. All right, wonderful. All right, now let's go down. Hey, did that not work? Let's inspect it. All right, it's being overridden, which is okay. So let's go in here and just make it a bit more specific. Um, so I'm just going to put this inside of a P for now. I know that will work. Hmm, it should have worked. Hmm. Oops, I added pixels on the end. All right, so I, I may not even need this now. Uh, it's supposed to just be 400, not 400 pixels. <laughs> That's my problem. All right, great, that works. Okay, let's check out the spacing here. I'm most worried about the space between these. Uh, this should be a lot closer since this description goes with this kind of heading here. Uh, so let's find our H6, and we're going to want to remove most of that bottom margin. So we can see we have 46.6 .6 pixels uh, down here. So it's the margin is probably an EM. Yeah, so we have an EM value. Uh, let's try to make it, let's just go right here with our, six, let's go margin, bottom, let's give it eight pixels. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay. And actually, let's go with the margin top of 16 pixels. Yeah, much better much better hmm you know what I may even want to let's increase this to 24 and let's bump this down all right so something else is messing it up it's it should be all right Let's figure out what else is messing this up. Okay, so on these P tags, uh, we also have a margin at the top here, which, huh. In this case, I think a negative margin is going to be the easiest uh, way for us to go instead of trying to select these P tags and not affect some of the other ones. So let's go back on that H6. And let's go with that margin bottom and let's take it negative. And Twelve looks not bad. Yeah, twelve's not bad. On these headings, I'd like to have a little bit more space, though, uh, above each one. All right, so let's first put this in. See, uh, see, you can see the value now, um, especially if you're just starting out, uh, the value of using DevTools, of being able to immediately just kind of adjust your changes. And then you can just copy and paste them right over into here. You know, just quickly hit save and then a refresh on your browser just to double check that everything worked. And there, you know, just kind of line by line, you um, can test your, uh, your styles and 
you know, we've kind of made quick work of, of this page and cleaned it up quite a bit. And we have like a really nice tight feedback loop, you know, like immediately we can see the changes. Uh, so it can, at least for me, it, you know, it really helps save a lot of time, you know, being able to, you know, do things like this. Okay, I want to now add a margin on the top of these headings. Oh, sorry for the yawn. Mm, okay. Margin top. 16. No, that's not working. Why is it not working? All right, so let's let's go up a bit here to these right column details, and let's add it on right column details. Let's go margin top, sixteen pixels. Hmm, that's not working either. Hmm. All right, let's add it to the bottom then. Let's see if we can make it work on the bottom. Hmm. All right, this is odd. I'm not able to change the margins and padding here. Why can I not do that? All right. I know I've run into things like this before, and I can't really remember. Oops, you know what? Maybe I'm, ah, that's why. I chose the wrong, wrong thing. Okay, let's try this again. We want center column details. Uh, so let's go with center column details, margin, bottom. And let's go 16 pixels. There we go. That's what we want. Uh, let's try 24. 24 pixels. OK, much better. I just wanted to make it more appa apparent that these headings go with the what's below it. All right, and not with you know what's above. So we have it has messed up this spacing. Why would, why would it mess up that spacing? Hmm. All right. Well, I like I like this look. I'm going to keep this look. All right. So this does look Oh, that's why so this was in a center column details as well. Hmm. Oh, so we already <laughs> we already had a center column details that we were using and we just overrode that. Okay. All right. All right, let's take this out. Let's change this. Twenty four. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, not bad. Could use a bit more here. Oh, 
uh, you know why? Because this is actually, this is right column details. Okay. All right, this is what we were running into before where um, we just had some weird things going on here. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can do There we go. All right, so we had set everything else to display block, but not right column details. So let's add that to our display block. So that's what we needed to be able to make this, this margin work. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna add under right column details, this margin top of 24. Let's save that and refresh. Great. All right, everything looks uh, how we wanted it to look. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. A lot better than what we started with. Let me check my time here. About seven minutes. Um, okay. So let's. Oh, my my uh, camera went off again. So let me set reset my camera. Okay, camera's reset. And. Think about this. Let's do, um, I'm going to try something with the positioning of this, this container. Uh, so this test ID content uh, should be the container for all of our content in here. Uh, so I'd like to make a max width of 90%. Uh, Gonna work. There we go. All right, so that'll bring this in a bit, and let's try to do the percentage. Do we want this ninety? Hmm. 
Let's go with, let's do some media queries here. All right, so with this, um, the default is going to be max width, and we're going to say 90%, and then we're going to give it a margin of uh, zero auto which you can use to center uh, something that is, um, not everything will center like this, but for sure if it's set to display block, uh, you can center it like this. It also has to have a width. All right, so we're gonna do that, but then let's add this media query. So let's go um, media screen and uh, let's go. to look at the syntax for this. I haven't written a media query by hand in a long time. Media queries. There we go. Okay, it is a hyphen. Uh, min width and we're going to say, let's just do 600 pixels for now as our min width. And then now we're going to say we want the max width to be, um, oh, let's say 70%. Whoops. Forgot to put in the... Uh, yeah, let's just copy this. Uh, so I'm there we go. A bit spoiled by SAS <laughs> not having to write as much. Uh, what did I say? I wanted that to be seventy. Yeah, let's try seventy percent for that. So I'm gonna save that. And refresh okay great so it should be 70% of the screen width in this case which so you can see it's only taken up 70% but as we get down to lower than 600 pixels it changes and now it's taking up 90% of the screen width right because on a smaller device you know we want to be able to show everything we're not as worried about you know screen uh, real estate there so that's that's what I wanted. I mean, there's definitely room for uh, adjusting that, but that just roughly gives it, you know, kind of a better look, um, you know, more of a look that we we're that we're used to. And so let me explain that media query. So if you are, uh, I, I've advertised this stream as being a very good stream for beginners. So let me change, or let me go through what's what's happened here because this. Um, is if you're just starting out, a media query is kind of a somewhat tricky thing to deal with. So here's what I've done. I've made the default. So this simply selects a div that has the attribute, the data test ID attribute of content. Okay, uh, because we happen to have a div like that. So we've selected that div. And this would be you know very similar to selecting a div that has a class of content right we've just kind of made up our own attribute there so by default the max width is 90 okay and as i said the zero margin zero auto centers it so the default size is actually the mobile size right once we get the screen bigger once it gets to 600 pixels Right, so if 
So basically, this is saying the minimum width of a screen that anything within this query uh, will work on is 600 pixels. So anything below 600 pixels, this will be ignored. If you're above 600 pixels, this will be run. It's below this, so it will use the cascading nature of cascading style sheet, CSS, and it will go with whatever value this has, overriding this value. So that's why we didn't have to add margin zero auto again. All right, that's not overwritten here, just this one. So once the screen gets 600 pixels, it switches over, all right, or 600 pixels or more, it switches over to max width 70%. And we could put anything we wanted in here. We could make the text size go to 300 if we wanted to on a big screen. We could make the background color go uh, green if we wanted to, really anything. You can reposition elements, you know, anything that you can do with CSS, you can put inside a media query. If you wanted to go the other way around and have this be the base value for a large screen and have whatever's inside the media query only apply on a small screen, you just switch it and do max width instead of min width. And then with max width, what would happen is anything that's above 600 pixels won't have any of this stuff applied to it but if it's below 600 pixels then anything in here will be applied All right so these I know were really tricky for me starting out with HTML and CSS it took me a long time to get comfortable enough to kind of write my own at first I always just copy and pasted ones that I know worked from other projects and would just kind of adapt those ones you know, it, even now, I had to look up the syntax. So I got to about here and had to double check and make sure I was doing it right. So I've been doing this for years, and I still have to look up the syntax, so don't feel bad about that. Uh, but it can be tricky trying to figure out, well, should I put min or should I put max? So it usually takes a lot of practice before you can just remember it. And even, I get confused about it still. Uh, but anyway, that's basically how media queries work. They don't have to be width based. You could set a height. Sometimes that type of thing helps if you're trying to target like a landscape view on a phone or you know something like that. You can set um, a width or, or a height, right? Because some big phones have much larger dimensions than you would normally think. So it's, it's helpful. Uh, you can target um, a lot of other things, right? So you can actually target orientation. So landscape or portrait uh, for a phone. You can target aspect ratio. Um, I don't really know all the things that you can, you can target. Uh, you can make a media query just for print. So it'll only work when the user goes to hit print. And then you can have print only styles be applied. So anyway, a lot of cool stuff you can do with that, but the most common use I've ever seen for these are for width, uh, for responsive layouts. So when you hear people talk about responsive uh, websites, most of the responsiveness comes from these media queries. Okay. There are some things you can do with JavaScript uh, that can also help, and some things you can do with setting like percentage widths uh, on items. That's very important, but you know, the magic happens in the media queries. Okay, I went over my time for coding and kind of talked a little bit, but I know that was really tricky for me, so I wanted to make sure I got a good explanation of that in for all of you. Hopefully that made sense. Um, all right, so now we've gone through two Pomodoro cycles. We've accomplished everything that we wanted to and a little bit more, which is great. Uh, I don't think I messed up anything today, which is a very rare occurrence, so... Uh, I'm happy and my stomach quit hurting and I feel fine now so all in all this was a really amazing stream today uh, so I'm gonna scroll back up to where I left off in the live chat and I'm gonna go answer all your questions so if you have a question you haven't put it in the chat yet please do so now uh, you can also ask me questions on Twitter if you like my the link to my Twitter account is in the description below this video you can ask questions in the comments to the video 
uh, I'm on all the different social media things, so get in touch with me whatever way is most comfortable with you. I'd be happy to answer your questions, look at some code for you. I can't guarantee that I can answer right away, but I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. All right. One benefit of asking the question in the live chat is you not only get my answer, which may or may not even be a good answer, but you also get the expertise of all the other very talented, knowledgeable people that are in the live chat right now. So I do recommend that as the number one way uh, to ask a question. All right. Okay, so I did leave off with uh, a question about what are the colors on the number column. I'm still not sure what that was referring to, so hopefully uh, Moises, um, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, hopefully Moises has clarified later on uh, down in the live chat, and we'll see that in a minute. Uh, so I'll move on here. Uh, John Hansen has a comment, says, Jesse, you stated about trusting pixel size and it is absolute though it's a good idea to let others know that REM and EM is often a better choice when it comes to responsive design okay yeah that's a really good point um, yeah let's let me font size percentage CSS I'm just double checking to, to make sure I'm getting all, everything in the conversation here about REM and EMs. Um, okay, so let me address that. I do see a lot of people use REM or EM. The reason I don't use REM or EM is because I just don't know enough about them to use them comfortably. So I, I really, uh, I have nothing against using them, but I know what I do with uh, pixels will work because I've used it before. I'm open to learning more about using EM uh, instead of pixels as a unit. And uh, if that is generally the better way to do things, then you know I'll, I'll try to learn it and I'll try to use that from now on. Uh, but at least for this stream, I was definitely not comfortable using that. Uh, so. I guess that's but that's a good disclaimer on this so if you're watching and you're used to using REM or EM don't switch up to pixels just because you saw me do it uh, I this may not be the best way to do it it is a way to do it and it works but there may be a better way uh, so and I think that can go for everything that we do on this stream as well uh, I'm definitely just showing one way to do things uh, and that's the way I know how to do it and I'm always trying to learn better ways to do it uh, so if, if you think you know a better way to do something, please let me know. Uh, I can't guarantee that I'll start doing it right away because I'll have to learn how to do it first, but I'll definitely take it into consideration and try to use it. Uh, and if you ever want to submit a pull request to one of the projects and use a technique that you think is better, feel free. Don't feel like you have to match what I'm doing all the time. Um, I'll, I'll review the pull request, I'll check it out, I might ask you some questions so that I can understand it better. And I may end up using your technique in, in all my future projects. So that's certainly happened before uh, with people contributing uh, pull requests and it just blows my mind and I change the way I do things. So anyway, uh, John Hansen, thank you for bringing that up. And um, yeah, I wish I could say more about the difference, but I, I said, I'm just not knowledgeable. I know uh, you, John, and a few others have brought that up in past streams. And uh, so I think maybe it's time that I better uh, do a little bit of research on that. Uh, Nobir says, uh, Jesse, I think justifying a paragraph would also be better. Let's check that out. Yeah, maybe we can. Yeah, maybe we can try that out. I'm not going to try it right now on the stream, but um, maybe we we'll have to try that out. Let's we'll try it later on or maybe on another stream. Let's see. Also, uh, I want you all that are watching, let me know what you think about these streams that kind of go over more basics. Because uh, a lot of the streams lately have been going over more advanced things, uh, which is fun and challenging. But I have noticed that I'm getting a lot of response and uh, a lot of different people watching when I do these beginner type streams. So. If, if you all think that this is beneficial, let me know. I'll try to work in some beginner stuff, 
you know, maybe at least like once a week if I can. Uh, I may not always be able to do it depending on what I'm working on, but uh, I, you know, I'd love to be able to, you know, have these streams be accessible to, to a wider uh, audience. So let me know what you all think about it. Okay, John Hansen says, REM is a relative base that can be set even with media width at different sizes. EM is set, as EM is set, uh, will then change the pixel sizes with the width changes. Okay, that's interesting. So basically we could get like a responsive font size with EM. Let me know if that's what you're saying, John, if I have that right. Uh, I think that's what you're saying and that actually seems really cool so the idea then would be the font size would actually get bigger or smaller depending on our our screen size uh, which I really like that um, I, I love that idea so yeah let me know if I if I'm understanding that correctly please uh, Yusuf says hey I'm a newbie here and uh, newbie to coding so do you think Vue is a good option to start uh, learning a framework for JS? Um, I haven't used Vue myself, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. There's uh, people that, you know, that work as uh, developers that I, I respect their work, and they use Vue. So I'd say it's probably fine to start out with, but I would, I would caution, um, try to learn some of the basics of JavaScript before you go right into the framework. Now, I'm going to put a big disclaimer on that, right? If you need to do projects and get work done so that you can support your family and pay the bills, use whatever you can use, right? Uh, I totally understand that. So if you know you can get a job or clients right now and you need to use Vue, do it. But just while you're doing it, remember to keep up you know, your studies on normal JavaScript because that's going to set you up to succeed later on when let's say nobody uses Vue anymore, you know, years down the road. Well, if all you knew was Vue and you never took the time to learn basic vanilla JavaScript, then it might be a lot harder for you to switch to whatever the new framework is that people are using. So if you have time and you're learning, try out some regular JavaScript first before you go into a framework, whatever that framework is, which Vue is a good one. But if you got to jump into stuff and use Vue, there's nothing wrong with that. Just be aware um, that that you take a little bit of time to learn, you know, some of the basics. So um, I'm open to other opinions on that as well. I know I, I've heard people have strong opinions before about making sure you learn vanilla JavaScript. And like I said, assuming you have all the time in the world to just study, yeah, that's probably a good way to do things. But realistically, most people don't have that luxury. So I'm, I'm not going to you know, uh, say, hey, you've got to do it like this and make everyone feel bad for not being able to do that. Uh, so I say try to do it the best way you possibly can within reason, you know, take into account your situation. see oh goodness no beer said it was it was 240 a.m. Uh, where he's at and that was that was a while ago so it's probably after 3 a.m. now thanks for staying up so late no beer please feel free to go to sleep if you're still awake you, you, know, you can always just catch the end of the stream uh, on the you know the recording John Hansen has a quick React question. Which is better, Axios or Fetch for in a simple post to a PHP mailer? Um, I have very limited experience with Axios. I've seen it in use. I can't remember if I've ever actually used it myself. But I am a big proponent of using Fetch because um, it's, well, depending on the browser, it's supported, it's built in. Um, 
it's going to be more lightweight for you. Axios is another library, you know, that you have to learn. Uh, more things you have to bring in. I don't know how heavy Axios is, really. So it could be super lightweight and it's not an issue. But uh, I've always gone with Fetch. So, but like I said, I don't know enough about Axios to really get into pros and cons other than I figure it's it's always better to just use you know whatever the base thing is you know for the browser which in this case is fetch not for every version of every browser but going forward that's I think that's gonna be what's what's used so we may as well just use it now unless there's some feature in Axios that that you really really need or like uh, let's see uh, Regal says in all honesty I like PHP and Ruby and uh, whatnot over JavaScript JavaScript just seems to do some really silly stuff by comparison and you have to second guess it a lot uh, in my opinion hey that's totally valid um, let me see Regal are you the one that asked earlier maybe not uh, somebody had asked earlier about whether to learn PHP or, or something like that and um, I think I had mentioned, you know, it really kind of depends on what you like using. Uh, so the bottom line is there are jobs out there for PHP developers. I mean, think of all those WordPress sites out there, right? As long as WordPress is out there, there's always going to be jobs for PHP developers. Um, and then like Ruby, there's a lot of Ruby sites out there. there there's work for people in almost every language. Uh, so find what you really love to, to do and do it uh, if you don't really have a preference then maybe you want to look more into well what what companies do I like to work for what do they use uh, things like that um, but I mean that's just the way it's gonna be yeah you know, some people like chocolate ice cream some people like vanilla some people like strawberry it you know it's it's only natural that the same thing's gonna happen with programming languages you know, I like JavaScript. I don't really care that much for PHP, but I use it when I have to. I don't hate it. I just like JavaScript better. Um, I don't think there's any programming language that I hate. You know, they just, I like JavaScript better because I've had the most experience with JavaScript. It makes sense to me, right? So, you know, when uh, Regal is saying here, it JavaScript seems to do some really silly stuff by comparison, it doesn't seem silly to me because I'm used to it, right? Uh, so it just all kind of depends on what you're used to doing. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, coding in whatever language you want. Like I said, as long as, as long as you're cool with it and you can do good things with that, then, you know, go for it. Uh, good Girl Sammy says, can you learn coding at 21 years old? Um... Yeah, you can, for sure. Uh, I don't know if if you're asking if 21 is too old or too young to learn to code, but I would say 21 is a, a fine age to learn how to code. I didn't really start getting into coding, you know, seriously full time until I was 20 in my late 20s. I can't remember how old I was exactly. So I was in my late 20s. Um, so. And I'm an okay coder now. Uh, you all can judge for yourself because I've done enough live streams that I'm not even going to attempt to rank myself as a coder. Uh, it's it's there for everybody to see. Um, but yeah, so um, if you want to learn coding and you're 21, go for it. Uh, Sergio said, no, you are too old. Most people start coding at 10. I'm assuming that that's a joke. Uh, it's being sarcastic uh, from Sergio. Um, Harshit said, but I like Axios API more. Yeah, in that case, if you really like Axios, use Axios, right? If Axios works, you know, stick with it. Let's see. Uh, Rook says, I'm 26, started less than a year ago. Um, Jordan asked if I was doing this in WordPress. Uh, the data is coming from WordPress. So I'm running uh, what's called a, a headless uh, installation of WordPress. 
So I'm not using any of like the, the themes, right, or the templates for things. I'm just using it to be an admin interface for people to store data in a MySQL database. And then I'm using uh, the WP GraphQL plugin to be able to use GraphQL to pull the data out and into our React project. So what we were just working in is actually React. Um, but we were just pulling in a bunch of HTML and so we were doing it we we're using just basic CSS and not really a more React style of doing CSS just because of the unique situation that we're in uh, with this data. So at some point we'd like to convert it all over so we can do it you know a little bit more properly according to the you know best practices with React. Uh, but right now, you know, we need to, we just need to make sure that we get it looking good for launch day, and uh, so that's first priority. Um, you know, the other stuff will get pushed back and get, can get taken care of after launch. Uh, Good Girl Sammy is, I'm just going to follow this conversation a bit because I think it'll be helpful to uh, newer people. So Good Girl Sammy says, uh, Rook, how long did it take you to learn it? Uh, less than a year. Because um, Rook had said, uh, so Rook started last year. Um, let's see, Harshit asks if uh, Good Girl Sammy was starting from scratch. Um, let's see. Uh, John Hansen says, I just started HTML and CSS a long time. I started just HTML and CSS a long time ago, but jQuery, PHP, JavaScript, React at the age of 60, never too old. I like that. Thanks for sharing that, John. Oh, I see uh, Harshit caught that I was trying to use pixels on font weight. Thank you, Harshit. Uh, didn't see it in the live chat, but I, I appreciate you putting it in there. Okay, so Good Girl Sammy is starting from scratch, um, but has has a lot of ideas. Uh, just got to learn to code. Leonardo uh, Leonardo says, "What's up? How you doing? How y'all doing today?" Uh, I'm doing pretty pretty well uh, now. Um, so, how's how you doing? Thanks for watching. All right, so Poison said, I'm glad other people have problems with styling. I always thought I was the exception. Well, I don't know about everybody else, but I definitely have problems with styling sometimes. I actually really love CSS. I know I've heard some developers that are specialized in JavaScript say they don't like CSS, but um, I, I still like it. I, I really like it. It's just so easy to make things happen on the screen you know, very quickly, but it is tricky. It's very tricky sometimes. Steven says, Jesse, going old school with straight CSS today. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Good Girl Sammy says, I got a question for you. If, if you got a nice idea for a project, should you go to a company or should you try to build it yourself? Um, my, my answer to that would just be, it depends on if you think you have the skills to be able to build it yourself. Uh, so, if um, if you can, then why not build it yourself? It might be fun. You might learn a lot in the process. Uh, if it's a, a big idea where you think that you know you're definitely going to need help with it, or you know maybe a lot of funding, then you might want to go to a company. But don't really take my word for it. I don't have a lot of experience at doing things like that. 
you know sometimes I have ideas and I use them I figure out a way to use them in my my day-to-day -day work so I can work on it I don't really have experience with going to a company and proposing my ideas let's see Uh, John Hansen asks, when the production build is deployed to the server, why is it that so many things keep the site alive in, in cache, especially when updating the files? Is there an easier way around this? Um, John, are you asking in general or in particular to the sites that we've been doing on the stream? Uh, in general, I know there's there can sometimes be a caching problem. Uh, for instance, like a CSS file might be cached in a user's browser, and you can't do anything about it unless you change the name of the CSS file. So there are some things you can get that can automatically change the name every time you update your CSS file, and then you push. It changes the references. Um, I, some of my projects, the earlier projects, were set up with Gulp, and uh, we had it set up to automatically change the references to the files in the production build and change the name of the CSS so that's one way to get rid of it uh, but otherwise you know all your caching options can definitely be changed you know, if you have caching going on in a server um, you know you can you can set all that yourself even if you're using a content delivery network like Cloudflare or something you can still go in and you know manually flush the cache so I guess Depending on how you set things up, you know, it, it can make it harder or easier to get rid of the cache if you make updates, uh, but there's always a way to, to make that happen. Uh, Rook says, that shares a lot of fighting the markup you have to do there, Jesse. How excited are you about everything eventually being in the right spot in the database? <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm trying not to think about it too much because I know that day is, is months away. Um, so I'm, I resign myself to the fact that I'm going to have to fight with the markup for a little while. Uh, but I'm I'm convinced that that is going to be the easier, the faster route, and we, we need speed for this project right now. So the cool thing is going to be too that when the site comes out, it's definitely going to be an obvious improvement over what the current site is. So people are going to like it. It's going to load a lot faster. It's going to be more clean. People are going to like it. But then a month or two after, once we get the data all sorted out, we can actually make you know what we have going on now even better um, so it's almost I think gonna be a good thing because users are gonna see this big change and it's gonna be so much better and then not that long after that they're gonna see these tiny little changes in the different parts of the site as we get the data you know sorted properly and when we do that and we pull it into our react uh, components we're going to style it a bit differently. We're going to do it exactly as we would have done it if we had the freedom right now to do it that way, all the freedom over the markup. Uh, so I think it'll be cool for people to see how actively you know, we're keeping up with the site. Uh, not everybody's going to notice that, but some people will, and I think they'll appreciate that. We might never know about it or hear any compliments about that, but um, I, I think it'll be, it'll be fun. Okay, Harshit is responding to John Hansen's question about uh, caching uh, and is talking about um, th there's a way with Webpack to automa automatically change file names. Uh, so, yeah, so that's pretty much what I was doing before with Gulp, but you can also do it with Webpack.
Hey, Quincy's here. So Quincy Larson uh, was in the, the chat. Not sure if he's still here, but he was here at one point. Uh, if you don't know who Quincy is, um, he is the, the founder and head of Free Code Camp. So without Quincy, none of this would, would be going on. Uh, it's always a pleasure when Quincy gets to uh, check out some of the, uh, the live stream. So I remember when Free Code Camp first started up, uh, just thinking like what an awesome guy Quincy was for starting this. So uh, I'm still a little bit starstruck whenever Quincy's in the in the live chat. <laughs> uh, Rago says, you fixed the bugs in your stomach. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Honestly, you know what I think it was? I Most of you probably don't care about my health problems, but I didn't drink any water today. I had an, a double espresso, and then I had, at the Christmas party, some mulled wine and a root beer, and I ate a bunch of food and cookies, and I think that was just what killed my stomach. So before the stream, I drank some water, and once that got through my system, I think that's what would help. Maybe I was a bit dehydrated and had too much sugar. So I feel like my kids, when I tell them, like, you know, don't have too much sugar, you'll get a bellyache. Well, that's actually true. It happened to me today. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Poisoned asked, how often are these live streams? Um, I, I do try to do them um, every day, Monday through Friday, sometime around 2 p.m. Eastern time, give or take an hour or two. Uh, I don't always do them five days a week, though. Uh, frequently, I end up having meetings, or I might take a day off, and I can't really stream from my house because the the uh, internet connection is not fast enough there. Uh, so, anyway, ideally, my goal is five days a week. So that's what I try for, but usually it's less than that. Uh, Samson says, I have missed a lot in the past few days, but luckily I am back. I'll be following the streams. Awesome. Glad to have you back, Samson. All right, Quincy says, great practical advice. Thanks, Quincy. I really appreciate that. All right. Um, very sorry if I mispronounced this name. I'm going to try my best. Let me know how it's supposed to be pronounced if I mess it up. So it looks like it, it yes, John. All right. So it looks like it's I L Y O S J O N. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. So apologies for that. Please let me know how that's supposed to be pronounced. Anyway, um, they say, Hey there, Jesse, you have uh, given the best advice right now. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Uh, thanks. I try my best. I don't think I'm always right. I might not be right even most of the time, but uh, I, I try to do the best I can. Oh, okay. So... So John Hansen saying, you set REM on a div. Sorry, we're, we skipped back to the conversation about pixels versus REM versus EM. Uh, so, so like on a container div, like the HTML or the body, you set the REM. Then uh, using media queries, you set, um, you, you set widths with EM, and then they'll change relative to the width of the screen. And he says it works great. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna have to do like test that out a bit, and uh, maybe I'll go through a tutorial or something, uh, and maybe we can try it out when we do. Uh, we're gonna have to do a lot of different templates for different types of of pages. So maybe on the next template we do, hopefully I can learn enough about it that we can use it then. That might be fun to try to do and then compare. And then you all can see what it's like to do one or the other and how hard it was to implement one or the other and then what the results look like. Uh, 
Okay, so AR asks, why is synchronous functions bad practice? Um, or in industry practice? All right, let's... I'm going to see if someone else answered that first so I don't say the same thing. Okay, so AR, I'm, I'm going to do my best to answer this question. I'm going to say right now, I, I don't know if I'll do a good job here. Um, as I'm, as I'm somewhat confused about the question uh, because of that, that second comment. Um, so what I'm thinking is, the question is really, why are synchronous functions industry practice? Um, well, in, in regard to JavaScript at least, um, let me think. I'm gonna mess this. <laughs> I'm gonna mess this up. Um, at this point, I'm wondering if I should just say I don't know enough, or I should try to give this question a shot. Um, how about this? If you're still watching, could you clarify your question just a bit? Because uh, I'm not sure if you're asking why is synchronous functions an industry practice, or why are synchronous functions a bad practice. So let me know that, and then maybe I'll, I'll try to answer that. Uh, Rago says, for the record, I'm 28 and have been doing web dev stuff since I was 16. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, you've had a nice run of it so far. Uh, I'm going to try to say this name, Leitala Frese. I'm not sure. It's <laughs> L A I T A L A F R A I S E. Uh, if you let me know what the best way to pronounce that is, I'll be sure to pronounce it correctly from now on. Um, anyway, they say, yes, please do more beginner streams. Awesome. I'll keep that in mind. So, once again, please let me know in the chat or in some other way whether or not you like these type of beginner style streams, if you'd like to see more of them, uh, or just, you know, general kind of advice on on that kind of thing particularly about what what I can do to help out beginners uh, Ray goes says CSS is love CSS is life <laughs> I remember when I was first learning HTML I'd style my pages using tables oh yeah I, I remember that I remember when I first learned HTML I actually I learned HTML in CSS long before I actually started doing real web dev stuff. Uh, so back in I don't know, like the early two thousands, tables were kind of what I learned with. I'm glad we moved on from there. I still occasionally have to work on some old site that uses tables, and uh, every, they always like, well, can you make this responsive? And as soon as I see its tables, I'm like, ugh. It's always kind of a pain. Uh, Veronique says, "Yes, too much sugar, Jesse. Now you have my stomach hurting." <laughs> that was—I feel so silly that it was like, "Oh, I ate too much sugar and I didn't drink any water." Like I'm a grown person. Like I should know better than that. Oh, Harshit has some answers about those uh, synchronous functions. So, uh, Harshit says synchronous functions actually block the code execution, which slows down the application. In an async function, everything is fired simultaneously, so execution is faster. So, uh, that's kind of a good breakdown between the two. I'm still kind of looking for a little bit more explanation in the, the first question that AR asked. Um, but, uh, even if we don't get that, Harsha, thank you for um, for clarifying that. Um, Harsha says, Jesse, I have a question. Uh, how easy is it for me to get a job considering my current skill set? Honestly, Harsha, um, 
I think you have great skills. You've been such a help in all of these projects that we've been working on. Um, if I could hire you to do back end stuff here at the university, I'd hire you right now. Um, so I think you've got a great shot at getting a job. You have a good portfolio. You have a lot of pull requests that have been accepted for these projects. So you have a lot to show that you know what you're doing. Um, so, I mean, I know you're young, you're only 16. So that's probably going to be an issue depending on what country you're trying to get a job in. Um, but that's really the only issue that I could see, you know, that I'm not sure about is, is just simply the age thing. Um, I mean, I know like in the United States, you can definitely work at 16, it's fine. But would a company be comfortable hiring someone who's 16 for like a full time job? Probably not, at least not here in the United States. Um, so, but I, I think potentially freelance might be a better route for you to go, or e better yet, because because of your okay, Harsh is saying I'm not getting a job now. I'm at school. Okay, so assuming that you're out of school later on, you're older. I don't think with your current skill set. And assuming that you're going to improve your skills as well, which I'm sure you will, I think that you'll have a great time getting a job. Um, you'll have an easy time finding a job. Uh, so I think the key thing will be just making sure that you get your work out there to companies to see. Because if they can see it, I think they'll be impressed. I'm always impressed with the work that you do. So um, yeah. When you get out of school, make sure you let me know. And if there's any way that I can hire you for something, I probably will. Uh, I don't know if I'll be in a position to do that, but if I'm in a position to give you a recommendation or something, I'd definitely do it. Um, so anyway, um, just keep adding on to your portfolio. You know, keep doing what you're doing with contributing to open source projects. You know, it seems like you're already doing all the things that people say will help you get a job. Uh, so I would say just keep on with what you're doing. And um, like I said, I think it won't be that hard. And when it comes time for looking for a job, um, let me know. I'd be happy to help you out, you know, check out your resume and stuff and give you some advice. Um, I've been on both sides of things. I've been the person getting interviewed and I've been the person doing interviews for developer jobs. So that's not a bad perspective to have you know being on both sides of that uh, so you know I'd, I'd be happy to give you insight into that when the time comes Let's see. The Hopeless Brit says, Our website design teacher made us use frames slash iframes or something along those lines to lay out our sites. This was back in 2015. Ooh, wow. Um, I was with you until you said 2015. So <laughs> I remember learning frames also in the early 2000s with tables. 2015? I will say this, normally like web design courses at the high school and college level are usually behind the times when it comes to the latest stuff. So, um, yeah, so if I were doing a site now, I would definitely not use frames. I would not use iframes uh, for the layout, but it was done like that at one point. All right, so Umberto has some more info about this synchronous, uh, asynchronous function thing. So uh, Umberto says each type has their own uses. It depends on whether the function calls are dependent on each other. Uh, in some, if not most cases, you do not need calls to be fully executed before the rest of the code runs. Uh, so you would want async calls uh, for all of them to run at the same time. Uh, you would want to use synchronous calls, though, to make sure that one function runs completely before the next. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Umberto says, I presume async would be industry standard because most function calls can be run simultaneously. All right, that's, that's a great answer. It's very informative. 
Thanks, Umberto. Uh, Christian says, hello, I've been following your live stream since August, and I'm learning a lot, specifically on React.js. Your videos are some of my go-to resources. Awesome. Thank you so much for saying that, Christian. Uh, I, I'm going to say uh, I got a comment, uh, a really positive comment on Twitter earlier, and I always get positive comments in the live chat. And I just want to say I really, really appreciate it when you all have comments like that. I certainly don't mind criticism, too. Uh, you know, I, I always am trying to get better, so criticism is fine. But really positive comments like that help me to keep going. You know, they... When I see stuff like that, it's like, I think, you know what, you, you are really helping people, you got to keep doing this stream, and it, it keeps me going. I really appreciate it. So, um, so thank you, Christian, and thank you, everyone, who's, who's given uh, me a lot of positive encouragement. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Let's see. All right, so that uh, French-sounding name that I couldn't pronounce actually means strawberry milk in French. So I guess let me know how to pronounce that in French. Otherwise, is it cool if I just call you strawberry milk? Because that's easier for me to say. <laughs> um, but I'd be happy to pronounce it properly uh, if, if I can figure it out. Uh, Carlos says, I've moved away for a few years from web development. I'd like to know how to upgrade myself and learn the current tools. Um, Carlos, I'd just say um, check out, it depends on how you like to learn. Uh, if, you're, if you like videos, there's a ton of stuff on YouTube. Just make sure the videos you're watching are fairly new. Um, check out some stuff on what's called ES6 or ES2015. Uh, for some of the latest JavaScript stuff, you can go beyond it and even check out ES7, 8, you know, all that stuff. But at least ES, ES6 for some of the newer things that are happening in JavaScript. If you want to check out some of the newer frameworks, you know, check out React, check out Vue. Um, those, that would be my advice now. I'm not exactly sure where you moved away and what you were working on in terms of web development. Um, so I guess that would kind of depend on that. but. Uh, I guess it, it shouldn't be too hard to get back in. Like I said, depending on what you were doing before. Um, I personally kind of think that videos might be the best way to go uh, with that, just to kind of see what other people are doing. Uh, but there's certainly a, a ton of blog posts out there that can help you out as well. Let's see. The Hopeless Spirit says, yeah, it was a shame at the time. None of us knew any better about frames and iframes. Looking back, I shouldn't have just trusted our teachers and gone along with it. Yeah, that's a really tough thing. You know, like you want to trust your teachers know what they're doing, but there's really not a whole lot of incentive, especially at the university level, for professors to keep up to date, right? If a professor has tenure, you know, they really can't get fired unless they do something crazy. So, you know, they have to keep up with all the meetings and paperwork and grading. Um where's the incentive for them to really stay up to date? Because you can only really stay up to date on things if you're actually working on projects. You know, they don't have time to do that. So it's it's much easier for them to keep doing what they've been doing, right? They don't want to have to redo all their lesson plans and stuff every single semester to stay up to date, right? Or even like what's the current best practice at the beginning of a semester might change by the end of the semester. You know, this field changes way too fast for the current you know, way that colleges are set up to keep up. So here at this university, at Franciscan University, I'm trying to work with the computer science department to find a solution to that. So I have done a guest lecture and we, I'm hopefully going to maybe team teach a course so that the uh, computer science professor can handle a lot of the basic, the testing, grading, paperwork, and a lot of the basics that don't change of web development. And then I can come in and my part will be to get the students up to date on stuff I'm working on and what the latest is in the industry. I think something like that where you have a collaboration with someone that's actually in the industry working would be the ideal situation uh, for computer science students at the university level. So anyway, 
Um, I totally understand where you're coming from. I actually dropped my uh, web development course in college because of that very issue. Um, I'm going to have to wrap things up soon. My wife's texting me asking me where I am. Uh, I'm going to need to go home soon. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of a tough thing. You learn a lot of good things in a computer science program, but you often don't learn a lot of new cutting edge things. All right. I finished. Harshit says, Jesse, what happened uh, to the Electron project? You didn't even create the repo. I thought I did create the repo. Where'd it go? Let's check it out. GitHub. Hmm. Did I never push that to GitHub? Let's check out if you have some more calm. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I, I'm not going to be able to do it today because I got to leave uh, and go watch the baby, but tomorrow I'm going to do my best to remember to go back in. I had thought that I had pushed that repo uh, to GitHub. Evidently, I didn't. So um, I will definitely do that uh, at this week some point. Thank you for bringing that up, Harshit. Really, really sorry about that. Um, I, I just totally thought that I had done it already. Um, let's see. Um, Adit says, I stopped coding on Free Code Camp months back because of my exams, and now I don't know where to start from. I was at Challenge 258, and now I've forgotten half the things. Uh, Adit, I, the new curriculum is going to come out soon, I think sometime this month. So maybe if you want to just wait till that comes out and then start from the beginning again, there might be a lot of new stuff. Uh, that's what I would do. If I was thinking about starting right now, I would wait a week or two to see if the new curriculum was going to come out and then maybe try from there. And if, if you really want to do some things now, you know, you can go back through and do some of the other problems if you want just to you know, stay up on things. Uh, but that new curriculum should be coming out really soon. Uh, Harsh, it says, it's 3.30 a.m. now. I have to sleep immediately. Otherwise, mom will scold me hard uh, waking that late if she's awake. Harsh, it, yeah, for sure. Go to sleep. I do not want you to get in trouble uh, with your mom. I'll do my best to keep my streams earlier in the day for you. All right. So I really have to go now or my wife is going to be upset with me. Uh, so... Thank you so much, everyone. This was a great stream. Um, really great discussion and questions. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do another stream tomorrow, a little earlier in the day, uh, for all of you over uh, in, in India. I know it was really late for you watching. I know we have quite a few people from India that watch uh, and from that time zone. Uh, so it'll be earlier tomorrow. Uh, but until then, have a great day.